Krista. Hello, Welcome to Jordan. Real Pod. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so happy to have you. I've been biting my tongue since you walked in the door because <laughs> no, no, we keep talking. I'm I was, like, wait, save it. <laughs> yeah, I have so many things to say. One thing was you just said you were feeling a little nervous, like you don't think you're quote interesting enough for a podcast. Yeah. Tell me more about that. You have two million people interested in everything you do every day. Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I feel like because that's just everyday stuff it, in my head, like. I don't know. I just feel like I was like, what is she even going to want to talk to me about? I just don't feel like my life is interesting enough. I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, maybe I've talked about that too much. Maybe I've told that story too many times. That is wild. You are a like multi-hyphenate entrepreneur with multiple businesses. Oh gosh, you are nice. so smart. You are a mom and you're working. I mean, there's a million things we could talk about. I, I mean, I can talk about my kids all day for sure, but does anybody want to hear about that? That's funny. <laughs> hey, at least you have self-awareness. Some parents yeah. are like, so here's everything for Billy real? Bob did. No and it's kidding. like, okay. Oh my gosh. Um, but no, I'm so happy to have you. Actually, I wanted to ask, you don't do a lot of interviews. Why is that? I just, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I've done a couple of podcasts, but I feel like I've never really like dove into the podcast space. Like we've definitely thought about doing a podcast of our own, but Every time we think about it, the thought goes right out the door because yeah. I just feel like, again, do I have enough to talk? I love to listen to other people's. I love listening to yours. And Aww, I thanks. feel like podcasts are so fun, but I just don't know that I would have. I don't know. It's don't funny. Know. I get that way sometimes, too, even with one. Um, <laughs> but I will think to myself, like, what is it that I need to say? I find, though, that I tell myself it's because I do like to be very present or I think I am. I'm mm-hmm. not perfect. So sometimes when people do want to just like talk about the past, I'm like, not even like there's anything like the past, dun, dun, dun. I just mean, I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, well, all I can tell you about is the three hours I've been awake today right. and I don't have much content in I that. know. <laughs> yes. Even like, even on Instagram some days, I'm like, are people over me? Should I just like... I get that way too. Yes. I get so in my head. I'm like, why am I posting a story? Yes. Like who gives a flying yes. fuck? And then- <laughs> yes. Or I, like I'll like record it just talking about my day and then be like, okay, I'm kind of bugging myself. I'm not going to post that because if I'm yeah. bugging myself, I'm going to bug somebody else. But I then think of the people that I would watch them do anything. Exactly. And I have to tell myself like if I feel that way about this person, then at least at, one person. At this point in my career, I think it would be safe to assume there might be one person who yeah. would also care like what coffee I ordered. That's very true. That's very true. And cuz yeah. I'm the same way. Like there you know, you have your certain people that you're like I could literally just just put yourself on live all day. No, I'll just watch literally. you all day. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, if there was like a live stream of Taylor Swift, I I don't know if I'd ever look away. Oh my gosh, that would be the most interesting. Just so fascinating. Yes. Yes. Um, Because they do. People just are nosy by nature. They're curious. They want to see just like the everyday. And that's what I tell other people too. So I don't know why I don't take my own advice sometimes. Because when everybody asks like, how how should I get started? What should I do? I'm like, just post. Right. Just show your everyday life because people are nosy. They want to see it. I say content is the one area in life where it is quantity over quality. Yeah. And especially as an athlete, when I was like lifting, it's quality over quantity. If you do three good reps with good form, but then with content, it's like post literally every intrusive thought you have. Right. Especially at the start. No, I know. How many years have you been doing this? Uh, Like 10, 11. Because I started when Boss was a baby and he just turned 11. Oh my gosh, I that's know. a good marker. Just his birthday is yeah, your anniversary it's, it's of your the business. easiest way <laughs> to gauge it, which I say I start. That's when I like really started figuring Instagram out. I got not even figuring it out, but being on there more because Instagram was kind of new back then. And so it was more just so me seeing, I mean, it was bloggers back then. And yeah. there was just a, a few like OG bloggers that I would see. And I'd be, I'd be so intrigued. Like, what is this? Like, and then they had a YouTube. So I'm like, let me go watch their YouTube. Let me do the, my makeup. Like, they're doing their yeah. makeup. <laughs> and prior to that, were you working or a stay-at-home mom? Uh, well, just at that moment, I was a stay-at-home mom because I had just had Boston. But before that, I was a legal secretary. I have my degree in kinesiology. So it's the most, like, random mix of things. I was a cheer coach for a really long time. Okay, and Monica I <laughs> And then, I mean, I had like odd and end jobs. I worked at the sheriff's department and um, and then we moved down to Orange County. And so I just went through a temp agency to find a job 
and got a job as a legal sec. Well, I started out as like receptionist, moved up to legal secretary. And then once I got pregnant with Boston, I just kind of knew I wanted to stay home with him. And we ended up moving to Ventura for Bryce's job. So it kind of all worked out because I couldn't do that job from Ventura anyways. What was your first post then that went viral? I don't know that I've ever really had like a viral post. Well, now, I mean, I when, still when don't. the baseline is everything's no. viral. I mean, yeah, Sam's in the corner like, come no. on, girl. I tell I tell her that all the time because I'm like, I I feel like I have my crew. I have my community that is like Krista's crew. I love and I love them so much and they're they always show up for me. But I feel like viral as in like it pushing out to random people. I don't really ever get those posts, which I think there's beauty in having this amazing community and wanting to just like show up for them and serve them I'm the same way yes like, uh, sometimes it's scary when something goes into the ether and I'm right. like oh my god because that's when you get yeah the, the crazies come out yeah <laughs> but when you first started didn't you have to have like as you were gaining traction didn't like a few things pop off where you started so your your wheels were turning uh yeah I would say my like my twinning pictures with my kids and um especially like my bathroom carpet pictures those ones would just get more engagement to say that, I, I don't know, back then too, it was also different. So it's kind of hard to gauge what was like my community and what wasn't. Um, I'm not sure, but those ones always just got more traction too. And it was a lot of times people being like, that's carpet in your bathroom. Ew, that's disgusting. Really? <laughs> Sometimes it is like strategy to be, this is going to get conversation and I don't care about it. And so I, engage. Yes, but <laughs> I, I didn't even think about it at all. I it was a rental house we were living in and it it just was what it had. And it was the only full length mirror in the house because it was the closet door. Mm -hmm. And so that was the only spot I really had to take like an outfit picture. And so that's where I would do my outfit picture, my Vici try-ons and stuff. And yeah, every time I would post it, people would say something about that carpet in the bathroom. And I'm like, I'm sorry. It's my rental house. I don't know what you want me to do. But then we like turn it into a running joke and it became – it became like a thing and it still is because now we bought that house and redid it and the carpet's Aww. gone. It's kind of sad. R.I.P. to the original <laughs> yeah. carpet. Um, You just mentioned the twinning pictures with your kids. Mm-hmm. Adorable. Thank you. I actually thought of this today. It's not something I think about when I look at your page. So I'm not coming in like a coming for you way. But obviously the conversation about kids on social media yeah. has like gotten progressively more loud. And I actually don't know. Like I can't sit here and say I will never show my kids. I think I maybe want to find a happy medium. Right. What's your thought on it? I feel like that's where we've come to where it's never been uncomfortable or like a weird I don't know. I feel like because I started as an account that was just my personal account, my my personal life. and never, ever had the intention of it becoming what it became. I'm so thankful it did. And I think it's so cool now. But back then, like, it was never I, – I never, ever thought that, like, this would be my job at all. I was doing it for fun. I was doing it. We lived out of town away from family. So our twinning pictures and stuff were more so just, like, a hobby for me mm-hmm. because Bryce would get home from work and I would literally be like – in our outfits and be like, can you take our picture real quick just to kind of show like our family and friends and it just kind of grew into this thing so I feel like I see it more on TikTok now I will see like people commenting on other people's stuff about showing kids and I think it I mean you're the parent I think it is just what you're comfortable with as boss gets older is he like comprehending what it means to be on social media oh yeah he wants his own youtube channel <laughs> he, <laughs> he's constantly making little bits um on on his ipad and be like mom is this okay can i post this to my and it's usually about like fortnite or some video game that he loves and so he like will show me everything that he creates on there and i think it's cool that he is like learning that stuff just because he thinks it's fun, which is kind of how I learned it and how how I use it, you know? Yeah. I think like anything in life, it's easy for people to say blanket statement, this is what should be done. And if you don't do it this way, you're a quote bad parent or you're right. wrong. I think there's just so much more gray area than that. I have run into a, I remember a dad at the airport and the kids like seven and has like a GoPro on his chest oh and like I, I feel like I was watching the interactions and it just felt like you know when you 
you there are times you do turn on for the camera right and I just felt like maybe this kid was like oh I'm gonna get love from dad if like I his whole if I bring joy into this video and like dad is only smiling and happy when we do well like uh, me playing out this whole like existential (laughs) scenario I don't know these people at all but it's true because I think that there is a a gray area like you said or a fine line of like when they take it too far and I just feel like I've worked Instagram into our lives. I don't work our lives into Instagram. Love it. And so it's more so just like, oh, this is something fun we're doing. This is like a family picture we would want to normally take anyways. And then now with the brands that we get to do and stuff, obviously there's shoots for that or whatever. Um, and And I think it is pretty cool, too, that the kids get a little sense of responsibility through it and like earning money and yeah do you set up like accounts for them? oh yeah cool yeah they will get to go to whatever college they want for <laughs> sure like we make sure that they are they are well taken care of in that aspect because that's the only yeah right thing to do totally that's super important yeah um okay yeah that's cool I feel like I can't imagine never showing I also will want to approach it the same way I approach my marriage which is I like doing content with Max but I also want to be able to be like able to sustain on my own and have people interested in me without him like I don't want you know similar to you like it's a fun addition when it makes sense and it's genuine but also I think it can be a dangerous road when some of these parents like their account blows up because of it's just the kids life yeah um so obviously there's so much going on you have your kids you have your businesses I'm literally in my shop staycation (laughs) blinking out I love it thank you for the cute cherry pillows you brought me they're gonna be staples in the studio I want you to know that (laughs) how do you balance it all I talk a lot about mental health um on my show and on my page do you struggle at times feel overwhelmed I Of course, I feel like an overwhelming feeling is so natural in life and anything anybody does. So I definitely get those feelings. I will say they don't last super long, which I'm grateful for that. I can kind of like take something in and then like let it go or forget about it. Or even just like if anything negative ever happens, you know, I'm pretty good at like addressing it and then like moving past it. Like a negative comment or a negative. Yeah. Or just like a brand deal goes wrong or goes bad or something doesn't work out in your favor or whatever and I feel like it'll stress you out in the moment and then I'm pretty good at just like kind of passing it by but also I just feel like this year has been a really hard year for us Bryce I I was like I'm not gonna talk about it because I know I'm gonna cry Bryce lost his brother uh, which was his best friend and one of mine too so I feel like this year if anything has definitely been the hardest year for all of us and like even navigating that with social media like sharing so much of our lives because like I said like most of most of what we share is just our everyday life it's not really like getting content or it's just showing what we're doing that day or what we're working on and so something big like that of course you're gonna share about it and I feel like it was just hard navigating how to do that yeah and I think from the outside looking in when like narratives go awry and people are invasive and they're not respectful like it only makes it worse when like a family is coping yeah yeah and I just feel like obviously people uh, people want to know people are invested and I want to give them that but I and I'm I've always been such an open book and I think through the years I've had to learn like what my place is and and when it's appropriate and um just yeah giving people their space and and that's just what I've I've always done that with Bryce too he's definitely a more private person than me so I I, I'm not gonna share something he doesn't want shared or anybody else like that I'm gonna share what I feel comfortable sharing about myself but if it involves somebody else then Mm -hmm. that's not my place and I'm never gonna use that for social media And, and so yeah I just feel like we've definitely gone through a year that I've never prepared for and so it was all so brand new um navigating it all Bryce had a really hard year so more so just like trying to help him and be there for him and I think too a lot of people don't talk about like the other side the person that is trying to help somebody else because that can be so hard too 
But I just like remind myself all the time that I am so grateful that I am not feeling those thoughts or, or getting down that dark hole because I, I'm just so grateful that I can be the support for him because gosh, that would be so hard if it was both of us. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry. Thank you. And it's very human to be feeling these emotions now and for the rest of life. I think that's what we hear is like, you never stop grieving. You just find different ways to hold the memory and yeah. to cope with the pain. Um, but it's true. Like, you have your own feelings because that's a relationship you had as well and yeah. you're being there for your husband. And I think I saw this thing on – um TikTok, it was a mom giving advice to her daughter and she said, your life partner will have to carry you through like the death of your loved ones and the moments you never want to even think could happen. Right. But I'm sure like, what's it been like for you and Bryce leaning on each other? You've been open about supporting him through the depression and mental uh -huh. health issues he already experienced. So do you guys feel like you've gotten closer? Has it been hard? Oh, for sure. And it, and it's, it, it's really cool. Like having your best friend that you literally share every single thing with and you can be so open and trust that person to like keep those feelings or whatever like they're their own almost because I feel like it's so easy sometimes to look at other people going through something and and you you see it but do you really like feel it like they do and I feel like when you have I don't know a partnership like that like you really feel each other's emotions. Like even with our kids too, I feel like when I, when they are hurting, I swear a mom hurts more for them. And I'm like, if that could just take away a little bit of their pain, I will take everything on. I feel the same way towards Bryce. Like if I can just take some of your pain for you, that way you just don't have to feel as much. But so important to be there for each other. But it's also like I was thinking about it the other day too. My grandma when she was asking me how Bryce is doing. Because obviously it was his brother and his best friend. So everybody's always like how's Bryce? And then she was like but how are you? And it just like I literally like went into tears as soon as I was like nobody's really asked me that. Oh. <laughs> but it is because you like are quote unquote the strong one in the moment everybody's checking on the other person and not necessarily you. But then I was like, oh, dang, I guess I don't even check on my own self sometimes. Yeah. yeah, it's so hard. And I think when it comes to grief, especially like in our society, we just like get uncomfortable talking about yeah. that. And we like to pretend like it's never going to happen or right. it'll happen at some point. I won't have to deal with it. Like I even find myself that way, like very closed minded because it you feel so much pain and just the thought and then the experience and um, I've had people in my life lose family and you just, you don't always know what the right thing to say is or how to show up. And even when you go through it yourself, you still don't know. Like whenever I see somebody else that lost somebody, I, I'm like, I don't even know what to say because honestly, when you get those text messages or those messages and you're like, you're so grateful that they're even saying anything, I guess that's all that matters is that they're saying something that is just showing that they're thinking of you because I remember like literally the day after when Bryce was getting text messages from people like, is there anything I can do? And he's like, bring my brother back. I don't know. Like at that point, it's like, thank you for checking on me. Like that's all that matters at that moment because there really is nothing mm -hmm. anybody can do that's really going to make you feel better. Mm -hmm. But when all that kind of settles down and you can kind of get you, you, you see who showed up or you see who was there for you checking on you. Yeah. I think sometimes just physically showing up or the hug or uh -huh. the eye contact or the even I don't know what to say but yes. I'm thinking of you yes it's just better than doing nothing yes just sitting there with you one of our really good friends literally showed up without even being asked and like I was like that is so ballsy because if I don't know that I would have even ever done that for somebody just literally showing up at their door like I'm here I'm gonna help take care of your kids because uh, you're not capable of that at the moment and so that was probably the coolest thing was just literally her showing up and us being kind of like well, hello yeah <laughs> but trying. we always like look back on it like wow she literally was just there <laughs> I love that that's so special it was cool and obviously navigating this with kids how did you have those conversations we are such an open family with them like I just truly believe being I'm like sorry I'm sweating in here now no you're crying. good you're good <laughs> I got myself all worked up um we are definitely so open with them about uh, age appropriate obviously camp is only three and so 
he still thought Kai Kai could be recharged with a charger. <laughs> He's like, this here, plug him back in. I'm like, oh, that's not how it works. I wish it did. But um, yeah, definitely opening up and sharing with them and being honest because I think for a second too, they were all kind of freaked out. Like people can just die out of nowhere. And I mean, they really can. Like it's proven that life can change in a second. But I think, you know, having those open conversations with them and just communicating as much as you can, not I don't know. I just I feel like if you just kind of put them off like, oh, they're just a kid. They're not going to understand. Well, no, they're not going to understand because you're not explaining anything to Mm -hmm. them. So I feel like it's so important just to be really open age appropriately as much as you can. How have you found now that you've been able to kind of work through this to keep going in your life and your business and find little moments that bring you joy? Has it been like have you gone to therapy? Have you and Bryce said like we're going to go and try to spend a night and connect? Like how are you navigating that? Yeah, I feel like it's pretty cool that Bryce and I get to like be with each other every day because we get to work with each other and um we definitely make time for our trips together. Like we got our night last night together here. Um thanks to you for inviting <laughs> us. Uh but little trips like that are always so fun because it really does you get out of the hustle and bustle of like kid drop off, kid pick up, sports activities, and then you you're together all day. But you're like, but have we even really talked about like mm-hmm. how you're feeling? It's no, it's more just like go 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 work work work. Um, and we went to therapy together after, um, with a grief therapist, and she more so just like taught coping mechanisms, which I thought was great because we had never been to therapy before, like separate or together um and so it was just more so interesting like I'm always I always tell people I think therapy is amazing and everybody should do it and I'm not even doing it myself (laughs) but um but it was it was more so just the coping mechanism and I don't know I guess in my head I always thought it was so different but I'm sure every therapist is different at the same time what were some of the coping mechanisms like breathing techniques um and it, like she would have us write lists of things that we enjoy doing. And so anytime she's like, if you're just feeling, she was like, I know you're because when you're in that state, you don't want to do anything. So you're just going to sit there. And she was like, I, you have to go do at least one of these things. Just get yourself up whether you want to or not and go do it. And it actually did benefit Bryce so much to like, he would look at his list and he'd be like, all right. I'm going to go golfing and he loves golfing, but he's like, I don't, I don't want to go at all. And, but he would go and he's like, okay, that was, that was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Just pushing yourself to do something, get outside, yeah, smell the air, call a friend who's going to make you giggle. Yes. What is the biggest thing you think you've learned about marriage through the whole process? I'm kind of a newlywed still, but these are the big moments where you're really like, this is my fucking ride or die life right. partner. And that is what it is. I think that when you, when you know that, because at first, you know, I feel like some people might not always know that or feel that way. But like when you do, you will literally do anything, anything. And that's I think that was like the number one thing that I learned is like just never give up. Like you're going to try something and you're going to get so frustrated if that something doesn't work. Like uh, Bryce was trying um, antidepressants and I had encouraged him to do that because I had heard of it helping so many other people. And it was just kind of, uh, he was at his wits end of just like nothing. I'm trying all these things. Nothing's helping. And I was like, well, why don't you give that a try? And then it didn't really work for him. He tried a couple different. It would maybe work for a little bit and then stop. And, um, it was having to be patient through those moments too, because those can take a while, four to six weeks to kick in and start working. So you have to go through those times and it's like, you can get so frustrated at the process, but I would always remind him and we would remind each other just like there's always a light at the end of this tunnel. Like every single time he's ever had a rough patch or we've had a rough patch together, it always comes out better. And you always look back on that time and you're like, man, I'm glad that was over, you know, and we would we would just always remind each other like this sucks right now. We know it sucks right now, but we're going to come out of this and it's going to be OK. Mm-hmm. Like. What is that Jelly Roll song like? I'm not okay, but uh, but everything's gonna be all right or something. And I I swear that is just like my life motto because like it can be so bad. You can feel like 
nothing is going to, but you know, it will like, you just have to keep trying and just not give up because something's going to end up working out. It may take a long time to get there. It may take a lot of things trying, but if you don't try it, you're never going to know. I love that quote. I come back to this too shall pass a lot. Yes. Not that the experience won't have meaning or it won't always be with you, but like the current emotions that feel like unlivable, like they'll pass, they'll soften, like it's going to go in waves. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And even like with his brother passing too, obviously you're you're never going to give him back. I swear it feels almost weirder the longer it goes because I feel like in that moment, it doesn't really set in that this is forever. We were even just talking about it the other day. Like we're like, gosh, like we're never going to get to see him again. Like it just feels so weird, but you still know, like there are so many joys in life and just remembering him talking about him and doing those things that will remind you of him, I think is so like positive, even though it can hurt so bad, but there's still so much positive in it. Yeah. I believe in that tenfold talking about the person you love, yes. bringing them up. They would have loved this. Yeah. Wish they were here. Like um, my best friend lost her dad when we were really young and still to this day, like we'll shoot texts like, oh my God, he would love Aww. this. Or we saw this yes. photo. It's like, it's so important. And then, and then you get to a place where like you can, yeah, of course there's going to be days where you break down crying and it right. feels unbearable. And then there's going to be other days where you can giggle and be like, oh my God, they think this is so funny exactly. or they'd be giving yes. me so much <laughs> yes. shit right now. Yes. We were literally just like dying laughing about stuff with him the other day. And that's the one thing is that like, he could still always make us laugh even when he's not here. <laughs> oh, I love that. What do you mean you're not, you, there's no depth? Krista, this is going to help so many people. Oh, Thank I you for being like vulnerable. I, I but got, it's human. I feel like if you came in today and you were like, oh, I'm just going to be happy. and whatever, Like that's not real life for a lot of people. And everyone, I think it, everyone has a thing they could cry about at any given moment. Yeah. If yeah. we're being real. It's so true. <laughs> and I feel like the older I get, I'm turning into my mother. I just, I remember watching my mom open like a birthday card card and she's crying and I'm like we all, me and my sister's always like stop mom like why are you crying yeah and now I'm like that's me I'm a mom <laughs> yeah and it's it comes from love like you know if if you start crying because you like with someone you love or you're having a great experience and you're sad it's gonna be over it's yes. like how beautiful that I love my this situation yes. in my life so much I'm crying right but the moment's <laughs> impermanent yeah it's oh. so true oh well thank you for sharing and also my mom when my mom's dad passed away really suddenly and we were young she struggled as well like how do I tell my kids because they literally just saw him went to the pool and now he's gone so she actually wrote a children's book called losing Aww. papoose I'll send it to you oh my gosh maybe it would so be helpful sweet. for the yes. babies yes um, no I would love that that it is it's I feel like as a parent you're doing everything for the first time and you are just in your head like I I just don't want to screw my kid up and that's yeah. all like and I think if I mean, obviously, if you're thinking that way, you're putting them first and you're always thinking of them. But it is hard because you are like, I'm doing this. And then I have to, like, give my parents grace, too, because I'm like, they're still parents for the first. They're doing everything. Everybody's doing everything for the first time. The the best they can. Yeah. Literally. Even if you think that they know they could do better, like they know – but they didn't do it because they didn't have the capacity or the awareness right. or the the too much pride. Like everyone literally is doing the best they can yeah. and we can only just give people grace. Yeah. How are you um, building strong, close relationships with your kids? I feel like we are just like so close with our kids and I'm sure so many other people are the same way. But I've always been so close with my parents. And then I think it just kind of my sisters are so close with their kids that yeah, I, I – I think there is – everybody's like, you have to be the parent, not the friend. But I think you can be both. Yes. I, do, I just – I don't like that, like, you need to be the parent, not the friend. I'm like, yes, but you can be both. I just want my kids to always know, like, I am there for them and that if they have anything that happens in their life, like, I want to be the first person they run to and tell and can talk to and, see, like, what do I do? What should I yeah. – I just – Every night, like when we're going to bed, I'm always just like, is there anything you guys want to tell me? <laughs> What's new? <laughs> Any secrets? <laughs> yeah, with hot gossip. <laughs> but I'm just You're like, literally the mom from me. Girls, tell me the <laughs> <Yes>. hot gossip. <laughs> but I am. I just am like, I want to know everything about their day at school. Because I feel like so many times kids can come home from school and you're like, how's your day? Good. And then that's the extent of it. But it's like, no, tell me every- who'd you play with? Who was it? Was everybody yeah. nice to you? Were you nice to everybody? Like we go down the list of our questions and I yeah. feel like. 
just trying to be so open with them. And again, like age appropriately having that communication and letting them feel comfortable enough to ask you anything. And oh my gosh, call that just reminds me. Collie just came up to me the other day and she's like, mom, are you the one doing the elf? And I was like, <gasps> oh, why is she asking me that? <laughs> and I literally, because my first reaction to everything in life basically is I laugh. And so I started laughing and I'm like, why? She's like, I've just seen some videos sometimes of moms being like, so this is what I'm doing with the elf tonight. And I'm like, oh, I think they're just <laughs> wanting oh, to make it's fun. It's tough because then you're like, will she say I lied to her? I know. That is where I was struggling. And Bryce was like, yeah, but that's like, that's that magic as a kid that they can still hold on to for a little bit yeah. longer. I'm like, no, it's true. I believed in Xana forever. Like forever. And honestly, I feel like I cannot think of one adult who's like, and F my parents because yes. not about For Santa. Real. Like, we all forget how <laughs> yeah. we found out. Like, you realize it's charming. Exactly. I think if she came up to you and was like, no, serious. And you could tell she was, like, emotionally frustrated. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, why not keep the magic? Like, she'll – I wish I could go back to believing in Santa. <laughs> I know. Like, I the, know. The, the reindeer tracker. For I mean, real. it was so sweet. I know. Um, I love what you said, though, about you can be the parent and the friend. Max and I were talking about this the other night at dinner because – I, I think my parents did a good job at that because they're literally like two of my closest friends. Uh -huh. I like being around them. My mom is literally one of my best friends. Right. We are rarely in a mom-daughter like yes. flow yeah. than more so we are just like, of course, that's always the baseline, but I just love being around her. I love sitting on yes. FaceTime with her. And when you get older too, it does become that friendship because at that point, like she's always going to be your mom. You're always going to be her daughter, but- I mean, no longer does she have to sit there and like take care of everything for you. Um, but it is, it's because that same, same, my parents are with us all the time. Like they go on vacations with us and do everything with us. They live right down the street. So it is so nice having that because they, I, I think too, you just learn to like family and your close group of friends are going to be everything mm -hmm. to you like throughout your life. Like with, without that, I feel like it's, I don't know, we look back on the the friends that are there and we're like, gosh, like they made it so much easier to get through things or they made it so much more fun. And, yeah. and that is your family or your friends or a mix of both. And so I feel like when you have those relationships, they make life so much better. And that's where I would say quality over quantity. Yeah. You know, the friends that you choose to be family or the people in your life that you treat as family you don't need so many exactly. you just need a few yeah my mom always used to say to me I literally remember being in the passenger seat of her car driving home from school I don't even know what the conversation was but she was like sweetie as long as you have like she said five at the time that even could feel like a lot three I think is plenty but uh -huh. she was like as long as you have five people you could you know you could count on I think maybe she said you could even be me and dad you you are like you are rich in For relationships real. it is so true because we see now like the giant birthday party and like all these people and I don't know it creates a pressure I remember in college I felt really insecure when I didn't have like a group of 10 to come to dinner and so then I would like kind of like make it happen but it wasn't genuine and I yeah. felt awkward too yeah but then I would be sad if I just stayed at home with just my one friend but that was enough. I know. I just was too insecure to realize it. I know. I know. And I think it is going through those situations that makes you realize more what really matters and what, yeah. Uh, that just reminded me too, senior year, me and Britt, my best friend, who's now my sister-in-law, we threw a pina party. We literally made flyers that we like handed out at school. And I think like five people showed up and we were like so embarrassed at the moment and now we look back and it's like one of the best memories because we're like that was so funny like we thought this was gonna be That's like this funny. huge rager yeah. at my parents house with my parent her, her mom was there too but like we just thought all these people were gonna show up for this senior party and we we're like no but it's actually so fun which yeah. is like this small little group of yes friends. I just had something similar <laughs> I didn't like care as much because we're all adults people are busy but my friend and I threw a witch party oh, and like we texted people it's like out of town out of town out of town bu busy blah blah yeah. blah and, and so it ended up being smaller than we thought but it was perfect yeah. because it, we were all hanging out with each other the whole night yes. you didn't get like stuck in the kitchen with the girl you've yeah. never met and then you're and you're leaving early because like it actually was great and I think that with everything thing in life we have expectations of what it should be so then we can't actually see the beauty of what the moment exactly. is exactly the last thing I wanted to talk to you about was just your 
intelligence, the strategy. It's giving like if T Swift was an influencer. (laughs) And I think the coolest thing though is that prior to this, like I I feel like you tell me if I'm wrong, but it's almost like you realized you had something inside of you that maybe you didn't know prior to this being your career, like that the wheels have turned and you're like, oh my God, and I've got all these ideas. Like you're you're really innovative when it comes to a creator and your relationship with your community and they're so engaged and I love watching it. Well, thank you. What's it been like for you as that's evolved and you've built such a successful empire? I, yeah, and I don't even, like to me, I don't know. And I, cause I feel like social media has gotten so big that there's so many people that are bigger that I am, um, I still feel like such a small fish in a big pond. Um, But I I just feel like it is so fun to me. Like it has never stopped being fun. And I feel like that's been the best part of it because we're constantly like trying to think of new fun things to do. And that's been the best part. It's just always doing something new. And it's just cool that your work can be so fun at the same time. So I'm just thankful that I got to like figure out both of those things together because honestly, I don't even know what my career would have been if it wasn't this now. And with like shop staycation, for example, because I'm cozied up in it now. (laughs) Me and Sam are always like, oh my gosh, it was in her video again. We saw it on her story. (laughs) I I'm not kidding you. It's my go-to blanket. I'm gonna need 10 more. It's so cute and so comfy. I feel like it's like a a marshmallow. Yeah. Everyone needs to get one. No, I Um, love it. We'll link it in the bio. (laughs) But um how did you like how do you come up with this idea? Is it your this blanket. one, yeah, this one kind of fell into our hands, I feel like, because we were redoing Horton Hotel. Um, and so I was like, well, it'd be so cool to like have things in Horton Hotel that people could get. Like when they come and stay, they could be like, oh, I could get this for my own house now. And so uh, someone had reached out to us um, saying that they do blankets like this. And normally when you get those things, I, you're just kind of like, oh, probably not. But this one, I don't know. We took took him up on it and we met with him here in LA and he kind of just like showed us the ropes and we were like okay this is cool and it like all happened so fast and now it's like our favorite thing to do is create new things and like figure out how we can make them different and unique and so that that's been super fun but yeah, I I feel like when I look back on how it happened, I'm like, I don't know, that happened so fast and just like Which randomly. Which are like, I think the best, most genuine ideas is when it feels like, oh my God, yeah. this makes so much sense. Yeah. Well, I love it. I'm obsessed. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm so glad. It's about to become, like, I'm slowly <laughs> going to just like bring them in and just get rid of, getting rid of the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. We finally, I don't think we have any other blankets yeah. in our house, but staycation now at this point. <laughs> I love that. As you should. <laughs> Well, Krista, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, this, thank you. Like, I feel like flew by. I had so much fun oh, talking no, to you. Oh no, really did. Thank yeah. you for your vulnerability. Yeah. That's what Real Pod is about. And I feel so honored that you came on the show. I know you don't do many. <laughs> well, thank you for like allowing me to feel comfortable enough to of course talk about all that. Like the highest compliment. <laughs> I like forget we're even here. I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, put the notes with away. how Just much I've watched you on social media. I feel like I like it's it's so weird when you meet somebody for the first time because I'm like, I already know you. I feel like oh. I've already met you. No, same. <laughs> me too. I'm an auntie. If you yes, don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your time in LA. Thank you. Ha <laughs> ha